ears are shut. This is the perfect time. This is the perfect day. This is the perfect month to return to your Lord and do Tawbah. And do Astaghfar. We keep our hopes on our wealth and our health. We have our hopes set on our children. We have our hopes on our degrees and the amount of education we have. We have hopes on the best colleges that we have attended. We have hopes on our businesses and our business partners. This disease has made it clear that our possessions have no values. They can be taken away from us in a few weeks. Few weeks ago, the world was perfect. Everything was normal. But in a few days, the world has been turned upside down. But we cannot be hopeless. There is one hope after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is one hope and that hope is Imam al-Zaman ajalallahu farajahu sharif. And I will share a story about hope. Sheikh Hurre Amali or Amali is a great author. He is the writer of Wasail al-Shia. A book which has many sayings of the Imam and many stories of the Imam. He says, when I was 10 years old, my father, he tried his best. He took me to all of the doctors. He took me to the Hakims of the time, all the professionals of the time. They told my father that your son has no cure and he will die. Now the Sheikh writes in his book that my father told all of my family members, all of the relatives, all of the community members, they all gathered around and I was laying down. While I was laying down, it seemed as if this was my end and I was ready to meet my Creator. He says, while all of this is going on, for a few minutes I fall asleep. When I fall asleep, what do I see? He says, I see that there are faces, that the nur is so bright that I cannot control myself. I go closer. I go closer and I see the first face. It introduces itself and it says, O oh, Shaykh Hurriyamali, I am your prophet. I am Muhammad Mustafa. Shaykh says, I shake my hands with the prophet. I move along. The Prophet says, this is Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib. I shake his hands. I keep moving along. I shake the hands of Imam Hassan. I shake the hands of Imam Hussein ibn Ali. And then at the end, I shake the hands of Imam Zamana. After I shake the hands of Imam Zamana, I tell the Imam and I say, Oh Imam, I wanted to have a long life and I wanted to serve you and I wanted to serve the deen. I wanted to write books and I wanted to give duruses and speeches. But unfortunately, it is time for me to leave this world. Now Sheikh writes that the Imam, he started to smile. There was a bowl next to the Imam. The Imam grabbed the bowl, he gave it to me. And he says, oh, Hare Amali, drink this bowl. He says, I drank the water and the water tasted like no other water that I have ever tasted in my life. After drinking this, the Imam gave me two messages. He said, oh, Hare Amali, this message is for you that you will live a long life. And you will be one of the best writers of your time. And the second message is for my Shias. Give this message to my Shias that whatever time you are in, 
whatever decade it might be, whatever year by me it might be, whatever circumstances it might be, that I am closer to you than you think. I know what is going on with you, my Shias. I am closer to you than you think. Shaykh Hurri Amili says, When I woke up, I stood up, I started to walk around. My family members are asking me what is happening. He says, I explained the whole situation. And I gave them the message that the Imam had for them. To keep practicing your religion. To not leave the orphans. To take care of the yatims. To take care of the elderlies. Make sure you pay your khums. Make sure if zakat is on you, you pay the zakat. Make sure you keep supporting your Hussainiyas. Make sure you keep doing all of your Islamic duties. The moral of this story, brothers and sisters, in Iman is that we still have hope. We should not be hopeless. We have the hope of Ahl Bayt We have the hope of Hussein ibn Ali, the one who is a savior of the lost souls. As I said, and this example is the example of Hurri Riyahi. Hurri Riyahi was a lost soul. Hurri Riyahi was the best warrior. Hurri Riyahi was the one who stopped Abu Abdullah from going to Kufa. Hurri Riyahi was sitting in that meeting. There was a meeting held when we should cut the water of Imam Hussein. Hurri Riyahi was sitting there. Hurri Riyahi was the one who avoided Abu Abdullah from going to Kufa. Now what happens? When the day of Ashur comes, he is pondering and he is thinking to himself, what should I do? He makes a decision that I will take my son and my slave and I will go to Abu Abdullah. He tells his best friend, that I am leaving and I am going to the side of Hussein ibn Ali. His friend asks, Are you sure that he will accept your forgiveness? Hur responds and he says, Yes, I am sure he will accept it. The friend asks, Why? Hur responds and he says, Because he is the son of Fatima al-Zahra. He is the son of Amir al he is the brother of Hassan. Now Hur leaves. He comes to the tents. While he is coming to the tents, Imam Hussein is approached. Abu al-Fadl Abbas is watching the war. He approaches Abu Abdullah and he says, There is someone approaching. The Imam says, I know who it is. The Imam orders Abu al-Fadl, grab two horses. They go on their horses. They go meet Hur al-Riyahi. The Imam hugs Hur. And he says, O oh, Hur, anta Hur fid dunya wal akhira. O oh, Hur, your mom has named you correctly. You are free in this dunya and you are free in akhira and you will be with me in paradise. From this, we can get the example of forgiveness. That no matter what dispute we have in our communities, no matter what fights or struggles we have among ourselves, in these times, especially in the circumstances that we live in now, we have to put everything aside. And we have to unite as one. And we have to survive this disease as one. That was the third thing. The first thing was, make a change in your lifestyle. The second, increase the love and the helpfulness. Third, pay attention towards the Quran. 
the fourth remember your imam of your time in our lives we get so busy that we don't even remember our imam we remember our work we remember our children we even remember those people that we owe debts to we remember everything but unfortunately we forget the imam of our time this is the best chance and opportunity to to recite dua al faraj to recite dua imam al zaman to recite the ziyarat of imam al zaman to remember your t- imam that was the fourth thing the fifth thing make sure you take care of all of your islamic duties wherever you might be wherever you are make sure you take care of them the first is salat or prayer one day prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam he is sitting with his daughter fatima and she asks oh my father what is the punishment for the one who leaves his prayer on time or they take their prayers lightly the prophet responds and he says there will be 15 calamities or hardships six which are in this world six which are at the time of mouth or death three are at mouth or death three are at the time of the qabr and three are at the time of qiyama or judgment day the six hardships of the calamities for the person who takes their prayers lightly number 1 there is no blessing in their life allah removes the barakat from their life number two, there is no barakat in the rizq there are many people who ask the question why isn't our money efficient why isn't my money enough for my bills or my kids why do i not have enough money one of the answers or a possible answer could be that you are leaving the prayer now because you are leaving the prayer allah has removed the baraka from your rizq number 3 those people who keep praying on time there is a certain nur or light that allah puts on their faces number 3 the person who leaves his or her prayers Allah removes that nur. Number 4, even if they do good deeds, their good deeds will not be valued as much as those who pray on time and they take care of their prayers. The fifth, their duas won't go up. most people ask why aren't my duas being accepted when you don't pray when you don't take care of your islamic duties when you leave the quran alone when you leave the husaini alone when you disrespect your parents when you disrespect other brothers and sisters in iman when you spread rumors how will allah accept your duas the sixth calamity that will be on the person who leaves their prayer is even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove their name from the people who pray for them for example if you say fula mr a you pray for me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't even accept that prayer why because you have left the prayer now the three calamities of mouth Number 1 he or she will have a humiliating death they will die zalil lowest and the most despicable condition they will die 
zalil. Number two, they will die thirsty. And they can be given the water from all of the seven seas. And yet, their thirst won't be quenched. Why? Because the lack of prayers. Number three, they will die hungry. Or hunger. The three of the qabr. When the person is laid into the qabr, an angel will shake his body in such a manner that the angels will ask, Why are you shaking the body? He will respond, Because this person used to leave the prayers without a valid excuse. The second one, There will be fire in their qabr. Allahu Akbar. On the grave. Imagine someone, someone's grave has fire on it. In the time of Prophet Isa, he was taking his companions somewhere. When they were leaving, there was fire on a grave. When they came back, there was no fire. It was removed. The companions of Prophet Isa asked, O oh, Prophet, what happened? How did Allah remove the fire? The Prophet responded and he says, This man, he has a son who is five years old. Today was the first day that he went to the local mosque. And today was the first day that the Imam taught him, Say, Bismillah rahman rahim Allah is saying, His son is calling me Rahman and Rahim. How can I burn his grave? The third is there will be darkness in the grave. Now the three the calamities of the Qiyamat or the Judgment Day. Number one, the angel will grab his or her face and they will drag it in front of everybody face first. They will drag it. And everybody will ask, why are you dragging this person? The angel will respond and say, they used to leave their prayers. Allahu Akbar. Second, Allah will test them in such a manner which will make it impossible for them to pass. Third, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove the eyes of rahmat from those who have left their prayers. So we see the value of prayer and we see those who leave the prayer on purpose. And I will wrap my speech with the following advice from our 8th Imam, Imam Ali al-Raza. One day a man approaches our Imam and he asks, Ya ibn Rasulullah, can you please give me good advice? The Imam says, yes, I will give you such advice. Pass it along to your brothers and sisters. He says, doing six things without doing the other six is self-mockery. It's someone who is making fun of himself. Number one, asking forgiveness from Allah verbally without repenting with the heart. You are saying, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa Atubu ilayh. And you are telling Allah that I will not commit this sin. Or I will not go back to doing this. But in reality, your heart is saying something different. Number two, asking for Allah's help without undertaking any effort. Many people always say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't help me. He doesn't listen to my prayers. It's as if he doesn't care about me. Brothers and sisters, in this dunya, if you work for someone, then they pay you. 
if you do not work for them, you do not get paid. It's a two-way street. Just like our dunya is a two-way street, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works the same way. The more effort you put in, yes, the more He will help you. Number three, making a firm resolution to do something without taking the due precautions. You are saying to yourself, I will start Salatul Layl, inshallah, next week. I will start reciting Quran next week. I will start helping next week. You want Allah's help, but you are not willing to take the baby steps. You are not willing to take the steps that will help you in this dunya and akhirah. You have to help yourself first, then Allah will help you. Number four, beseeding deliverance from hellfire without referring from lust. There are many people who say we want to go to paradise, but unfortunately they are committing acts which are getting them closer to hell. Number five, asking Allah for paradise without enduring related hardships. Like I said, everyone has the wish to go to paradise, but you have to put in the work. For example, going to Ziyarat. I was reading today, because it is third Shaban, let me mention the merits of going to Ziyarat of Abba Abdullah. Our sixth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq, Sadiq Ali Muhammad says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed 4,000 angels who stay on the grave of Abba Abdullah. Their faces have the sand or the turbat of Karbala. They welcome each and every zawar or pilgrim. They welcome them. They say ahlan wa salam to them. They pray for them when they return home. And when they are ill, these 4,000 angels still keep praying for them. When they pass away from this dunya, those 4,000 angels, they keep praying for the one who has visited Abba Abdullah in their lifetime. Yes. So putting in the work. Sixth and last thing our eighth Imam says. Remembering Allah without anticipating to encounter Him. Most people they live in this dunya as if there is no akhirah. As if there is no Lord, as if there is no end, and as if they will not be tested on the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters in Iman, I would end with the following words. This disease which has affected the whole world and which has halted the whole world this is a wake-up call for each and every person. Corona has wakened all of those who are asleep. If after the Corona we are still asleep, that means that wake-up call didn't work for us. This disease has given us the message that Quickly, life can end. For example, a few days ago, I was speaking to a sheikh, and yesterday we received the message that he is in coma and he has been affected with COVID-19, and he is on a ventilator. Allahu Akbar. This corona has given us the message that our possessions, they will stay here, the only things that will help us are our a'mal, are our good deeds. And I will end with these words that we must stay united as one. We must stay as united as the believers of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say, Oh Allah, if you can give 
Shifa to the angels like Fitrus and Dardail, Allah for the Haq of Hussein, for the mother of Hussein, remove this disease from the dunya, remove all of the calamities from this dunya, and when you take us, make sure when you test us, you do not give us the hard test. And I pray, inshallah, everybody is doing well. And we leave you tonight with this message that make sure you keep your Islamic duties, keep doing them on time, and you t- keep taking care of each other. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاءِ